Morning guys, uh, today's video, we're going to follow on from our um, how-to. So we've done a how-to replace your uh, wing mirror. We've done a how-to upgrade your central glove box into the drinks holder, uh, which this vehicle's already got because it's uh, newer than 2014 um, and was specced with the drinks holder. When this customer leaves today, he's gonna have the uh, Alpine subwoofer as well as the mini amp. Um, and a new Pioneer system with dash mounted radial speakers up on here. This video is purely for you to, if you want to add a cable in, repair something, replace something, or just want to know how your vehicle comes apart, this is going to do cover all of those in one video. So the first thing we're going to start with is this, this top glove box. Um, this top glove box literally just lifts up like so. You've got some screws in here and the only screwdriver that you're gonna need is the T20, it's a Torx T20. Um, you can buy it from us, it's not a problem. Once you've got these screws in here and undone, there is two here. Don't forget to put those somewhere safely. You don't need a magnet at this point. So one in the corner. and then one in this corner here. So we've got four screws, put those to one side. Now always best to remove your personal items out of the little cubby hole. And then this is simple, this one, just pop up like so. That's the little cubby hole. The reason why we remove these is because what we do is we will get a nice round file take a nick out of um, the corner or the side here and allow for the USB cable from the new head unit to go in here nice and neatly so that it's not trapped uh, and it allows then for your phone to plug in and be facing the sky. Also it means that actually inside this cavity if Matt can get in to have a quick look there um, you'll be able to see you've got access to the chassis down there and access to be able to cable tie some extra slack up and lose anything that you don't want. So that is what we call the top glove box. Really, really simple, four T20 Torx screws, um, and then the panel just lifts out like so, and to pop it back in, you just put it in like so, you can't get it wrong, and you push down, and you put your four screws back in. So the next part of the video is to remove the radio. Now, there's gonna be one of at least 10 different variants. This particular one is one of the standard Fiat um, factory fit radios that you saw in the facelift vehicles from 2014 onwards. Um, I've got a funny feeling it's called the VP1 um, because it doesn't have the navigation set up, but I might be wrong. We'll have a little look in a minute once we take it out. Now the radio keys, you've got four slots to either side like this we use the good old-fashioned um, voxel keys that we've had for years and what you can do is you have to be very careful that you don't scratch but you're going to put the keys in and you do need to um, you do need to bend and flex them into the right size but when you do put them in just give them a bit of a wiggle make sure that they are flush all the way through and you'll hear them push in engage when it does engage you're going to grab and pull out once you pull out you should, in theory, it should be as easy as that. If it's not, just try it again, because chances are that the, get, the pins are not engaged fully enough or you're not putting the outward pressure. Once the radio is released, like so, you can remove your radio keys, and then we can see what we've got in terms of the radio. So, yep, this is the Fiat VP1 radio. Now, because this is the Fiat VP1 um, radio it just means that we've got the slightly newer connector block on here this is the larger of the um, connector blocks and all you do is you press a button at the side like so so you press that button there and you slide this connector up and pull the one I've just connected is going to be probably the DAB FACRA antenna and you just push here this is the FM you just push and release 
and then this is the USB. So again, we just push and release. So we can put the radio down to one side. The VP1 and the VP2 are very similar radios. They all work and function differently and some of them don't have this particular cage set up. So at this point, we're just gonna take this cage out. This is a T25. So T20 and T25 are the most commonly used ones in here. We're gonna undo these screws here. So one and two and three. And four. Pop those into your little cup and then see what we've got here. You can push all that back in and the cage comes out and leaves then the aperture for the radio. So now you've got the radio out, you're thinking, well, okay, what am I going to do with that? Well, you could be adding more speakers into the speaker block. Um, you could be talking to the reversing camera that is pinned out in here. You could be talking to the CAN bus data, which goes into here as well to pick up things like speed pulse, reverse gear, talking to the steering wheel controls if this vehicle had any. Or you could be accessing this, which is the next part of our video. Next part of the video is to remove this, uh, depending on what vehicle you've got. So I've got a 2009 and mine is literally just um, uh, a map holder or document holder for a, a receipt or something similar. This one is very different. So this one is a, um, a, a pull up. And what you can do with this one is, um, I believe, yeah, so you've got um, a tablet style holder here. So you could put uh, an iPad or something in here uh, and it grips and uses it for mapping or navigation and other such stuff. But as soon as we have fitted our new nine inch system in here, this actually won't be functional. But it doesn't mean to say that you can't use it for other stuff, you've still got a clip, but we're gonna show you how to remove that as well. So again, T25, you've got two screws at the back and two underneath here. So not really, really difficult to find. There they are there, and I'm just gonna undo the screw. I'm gonna put my hand in there so that we don't then um, lose the screw as it comes out. Always handy, and I've always got one close by, always handy just to have that little magnet because if you are working in an area and you accidentally drop a screw, that's not good for then um, rattles in the dashboard and other such stuff. Um, I'm just at the moment using my uh, thumb. So let's just undo that. Not all, they're not always want to play ball, so. Get a bit of a wiggle and then those screws come out. Pop those into your cup holder. Now the other two for here is you pop up and again, I'm not sure Matthew might be able to see that, but we've got two screws at the back. Once we've undone those two screws, number one there, and the second one there, this whole unit will just lift out. So you can pop that back like so. And what that means is that you've then suddenly got a lot more access so if you were fitting one of our dash display gadgets you can put the wiring in here you could hide the gps underneath here on this particular vehicle because of the aftermarket radio that we're fitting in here we need to replace this whole dash panel so this whole dash panel is going to come out to allow for a new genuine fiat one to go in to cover this and give us a nice platform to work with so whilst i'm doing that i'm just going to undo these screws at the back Now, once we've undone those, again, put them in our little pot. We're now gonna move on to the air vents. Now, the air vents in these vehicles are really tricky. Uh, not for the faint-hearted. They look like they're gonna break. Um, sometimes the uh, air vent assembly comes away from the housing. It doesn't matter how many times we've done this, it always seems to happen. Um, we have got various tools. You do need to be careful because what you don't wanna do is then create some damage on this fascia here. 
irrespective of the fact that this is coming out and going in the bin, you still don't want to do any damage. So what we're going to do is I'll show you how we do it. Chances are because we're doing a video, it's going to be a pain in the backside, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go in at the top here and that's just in between the top seam. These air vents have got the sticky stuff put over. As you can see, it's already coming away because behind the silver sticky stuff is just black, uh, standard black um, trim from the plastics. But this particular Besser car has had the silver trim stuck over the top. So as long as you get your trim tool in between there, you can then get your fingers in behind. Now, with these, these have got quite a rigid um, metal pin that fits in behind here and I'm going to say to you even now this has started to come away from the actual air vent body and that's because the trim fixing it in behind here is really rigid so I've got a rigid trim tool and I'm just going to leave it out like so um, because what you can do is this if Matt can see that bit that bit of trim or ledge there is not an issue. So if you used leverage behind here, it's not going to damage that. You're not levering against here, so it's not a problem. But Matt, can you see that bit there? That bit there is the metal pin that I was talking about, and that makes a really good contact in there. But it doesn't matter, because once we've got the air vent out, we can then reassemble it and put it back together. So in from underneath the bottom, get your trim tool right in there, be nice and firm, and it unclips. Air vent comes out and shows you the two metal pins that really make contact with these, and they fit really, really well. One there and one there. Now you can say, oh dear, we've got an air vent that's not happy. Well, that's fine. Use a little bit of common sense, just flex the plastic up like so. Once you flex the plastic up, make sure the little guides sit back in the side like so, and make sure this pushes in. And then once you've done that, it'll all just sit back in. I think they've probably been designed to be flexible, but that's gonna go in and sit beautifully. Uh, job done like that. Now we can pop that on the side. Because we're then going to be removing this part of the dash trim, I'm gonna be undoing these two screws like so. So again, careful not to drop, and then this starts to feel uh, a lot looser now because you're going to be removing this part of the dash trim. So what I'm gonna do now is stop talking. Uh, Matt can probably speed up this bit. I'm gonna remove this um, part of the air vent, and then we can move on to the next section. Now we're at the stage where we've got the screws for the main part of the dash removed. If at any point you want to remove the main gator for the, uh, st uh, the gearbox here or the gear stick, always work from the top. You can't do that when you've got an air vent in, so having it out always makes a difference. But you can put your trim tool in like so, and when you unclip, very carefully, you can pull the gear stick gator back and leave it in like so. And you'll find that all it is, is just some clips. Be careful, don't be too forceful because you will break them and then it won't clip in and sit on there as nicely as you want it to. Whilst you're working, I always say, let's not damage the dashboard by leaving bits and pieces that either might have some grease or something sharp on there. So always, put your little bits and pieces to one side, set up a blanket in the back of the motorhome and put them down nicely so that you're not in fear of damaging because you obviously want to put all this back in. So now we're gonna concentrate on this area. So let's put our little trusty cup of screws out the way. We can shut our USB and um, cigarette lighter. And then underneath here, you've then got normally a rubber mat. If you haven't got a rubber mat, you'll have this but either way, it covers a screw. So we undo the screw. Might need our trusty magnet that was thrown on the floor. There we go, screw out of there like so, pop that in there. 
You probably don't need the trim tool for this, but trim tool is handy because you can get your hand in here and it just helps you to get in and lift it up, get your trim around the side, like so. If you're not careful and you break these clips, it won't go back in how you want it to and you don't need to do that. You can just be careful and it's not really an issue. Now you don't need to unplug this. There's very rarely you're gonna to need to get access to this main plug. A lot of the other motorhomes have an unlock button or a traction control or hill, um, hill hold or hill descent button on here, but you don't need to access this because it's a circuit board and you don't wanna damage it. You might want to access your cigarette lighter. Um, a lot of people don't smoke anymore, so this is null and void, unless you've got a USB socket that goes in here. But most of the newer vehicles have one here. If you wanted to change this, in one of our videos that we've done, we've taken this out and we've put in a really nice flush HDMI and USB socket for the newer head units that can feature an Amazon Fire Stick or, or another type of streaming device. So what you would do is you would simply press this little tab here, push that down, so I'll do that again, just push that down and slide, that pops out like so, and then you can access the cigarette lighter and the USB. Because the USB is factory fitted, they don't always give you a great deal of room here, so the chances are that you would need to track that back down to where it is, which is probably underneath here, and you would need to release it and unplug it. But either way, you've got a cigarette lighter here, and this, in most instances, is a good source for ignition, but most of the time, also, it's battery. So be careful. You'll have to check with a multimeter to see whether this is um, ignition on or battery on. Either way, um, you can do your tests and plug in like so. So let me just plug this one back in. The gate has to be fully open for you to plug it back in. It's, it's what they call keyed, so you can't get it wrong. As you push home like that, the gate will shut. If it's not in the right place, it won't, and it locks. Then you're at the final point to be able to uh, release the um, trim. Now this bit of trim round here is, cl is clipped in uh, and it's then relatively easy to do. But what you've got is then some access screws down here. You've got your two up here, you've got your two here, you've got your two here and any that are in the cage here. Once you've, I mean, you probably don't need a torch, but once you've released your screws down here, so let's have a look. Now there's four screws under here, so don't undo uh, the wrong ones. It's the two facing the driver's side. And again, careful not to drop a screw because that's going to leave you into situation of you trying to find it again if you haven't undone it enough just undo it a bit more a really handy magnet tool is always ideal now you're at the point of being able to just uh, release from the bottom and release from the top and that whole dash trim comes out now you're probably thinking at this point I'm really scared, I don't want to be doing this. But all I'm doing is showing you how your dashboard in your Fiat, your Citroen, your Peugeot comes apart so that you can then make some changes yourself and possibly save money. If you don't want to do any of this, come to the professionals. This is what we do every day for a living and it's then done professionally and carefully and put back. But this particular dashboard needs to come out for us to fit our lovely new Pioneer um, nine inch navigation system in here. So what we will do is um, later on, on another part of the video, we'll show you it all complete. If you've got the blinds, you will need a, a little Phillips screwdriver normally or a posi. So a posi drive or a Phillips drive just to be able to undo these. Um, so I'm just gonna pause the video for a second and get that particular screwdriver. Okay, Richard's just given me this and the reason being is because if you're going to use something like this, it, it can't get in there. So a little side ratchet, I know that all of you, some of you might not have access to this, but to be fair, some of the cheaper shops, no names mentioned, that are really, really handy that sell food as well as um, they sell all sorts of stuff like this. So you can pop your tool into here 
uh, and make sure it's on unlock, which would be helpful. If you can, once you get to a certain point, there's only so much that you can do. So you can use the bit between your fingers like so, undo the two little screws, pop them in your little pot. Okie dokie, and then put the bit back in the driver. Mr. Friendly Magnet just likes to get in the way the whole time. So, now you can release this. This is normally stuck on with a bit of double-sided tape. So you can get your trim tool in through there and just prise it off. If you don't have any of these tools, then we can sell them to you. It's not a problem. And then you know you've got the right ones. Now at this point, this can be lifted away. This little nodule here will need to be taken out and will need to be refitted into your new dash trim. It used to be um, a connection for the remote central locking, but in most of them, we don't find it's there anymore. Um, but you'll be left with a hole if you don't replace it. Job done. Right, so the next part of the video and the final part on this particular how-to is to remove the um, binnacle for the instrument cluster um, for routing cables and hiding cables and other such stuff. Uh, and we'll do that very shortly. Right, we've swapped positions. So I'm now on the driver's side. And um, what we're going to do now is um, just access this area here so that you can see what's going on behind here. Not that you should need to or want to, but if you do want to route cables, this is perfect because on the left hand side, we route our GPS and our microphone and sometimes our DAB antenna cables. On this side, we run cables over to pick up things like speed pulse, reverse gear um, and other stuff. If we haven't got the CAN bus data in this plug because majority of them don't have it. So again, trusty T25 and Mr. Mr. Magnet. The screws for these um, face up into here uh, and they're a bit of a pickle. Now ordinarily I would do this with the door open but we've got some noisy people on the estate this morning and um, they're making a racket. So I'm going to go in here and show you. Here's the angle. I know that you can't see that but you can see the angle of the screwdriver. Be careful not to damage any of your dash trim. Um, and those of you that are doing this um, and haven't done much of this sort of stuff before, lefty loosey, righty tighty. It's simple enough, but you never know. Okay, so we then undo this, or to be honest, if you are taking that kind of advice, then you shouldn't be taking your dashboard apart. So let's undo this one as well. Careful with your screws, put your screws away. They're the only two screws that hold this panel in. Now, you can just grab the panel at the back, lift up with your fingers and pull away. And in there, you've got these two clips. I've never seen them come off um, and there's a guide pin. You can't get it wrong. So when you do put it back on, you can line up the back after you've lined up the front. So overhang, push back and then push down firmly like so. So we can pop that to one side. Now the Speedo itself is also held in with the same T20 screws. I can't see them so I'm going by feel and they face the windscreen. So we'll undo those two screws and one that side and one this side. Pop those screws into there, instrument cluster out. You don't need to interfere with this, so please don't. Um, but what it will do is it will give you scope um, and access for hiding lots of things um, that you might want to hide from adapters and interfaces and other such stuff. But more so is you can run your cables nicely and neatly, put some cable ties in, cloth tape them so it's all nice and neat down through here. This bit of dashboard down here, if Matt can see it, um, this is where you've got your buttons for your um, headlight um, height. You can go up and down on your headlight and also your rear fog light. And this also is your mode through your instrument cluster for time, date um, and all sorts of other sub st uh, such stuff, speed warning and stuff like that. Um, with this, these are quite um, tight to get out. So I'm just going to show you on this video. I'm going to put the trim tool in over the top like so. 
and you can see that and then I'm just gonna put my finger in there okay might hurt momentarily because it's under tension and then I'm gonna do exactly the same on the other side once you've done the same on the other side you can then prise it out and the reason why you can see it's tight well okay there you go so the reason why it's tight I would say that that's been out before and it looks like it because there's an alarm or something that's been put in here there's the clip that's come off or about to come off so you can push it back on and here's the other clip again if you're in doubt use a magnet and we can put then our other clip back on because there's nothing worse uh, look at the orientation of the one that's come off push that back on there's nothing worse than having bits of trim rattling or not pushed in. But that's the reason why that's been out before is because of um, the alarm LED like so. And again, what you can find up inside here, you've got a lovely cavity for um, hiding an interface or something else like that, really handy. Um, so I'm just gonna pop that back in. Um, when you do push it in, you've got two guide feet. So you need to put the two guide feet in first and that's when it'll just sit and push back nicely. So that's it for as far as this video. The next how-to video we will do will be to um, release the panel in front of the driver's knee to access the fuse board and the body control module. And on the passenger side will be to remove the main glove box to access all of those areas. Um, but rather than make this video really, really long, we do that on a separate video coming soon. Um, but this is in a Fiat Ducato, very similar or the same as the Citroen Relay, the Peugeot um, Boxer. And for us, it's about how the dashboard comes apart, where the screws are, what tools you need, um, but you can have all of this done professionally. So if you like, excellent, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, tell your friends and family. We've got other how-to videos. We will do more how-to videos because this is what we're being asked for. Um, and don't forget to um, get in touch if you need anything. Thanks for watching. I